in the last 10 years, the London King scene has definitely evolved. It has become more inclusive, more diverse, more open, and it found more shapes you could pour it into. But it also has adopted a new wave of people, a new generation that ultimately have challenged it, pushing it towards something fluid, genderless, frameless, and unlike ever before. I'm Severine, I'm a fetish model, adult performer, and professional dominatrix. A switch is someone who is not boxed in to one identity within the BDSM umbrella, so whether that's describing dominance and submission or sadism and masochism. With women, I tend to prefer being more dominant. I love impact play, which can involve flogging, spanking, using other instruments, riding crops, canes. It's a way to gradually get more out of your submissive and the goal is to like take someone on a journey and make them feel like they went further than even they thought they could. With wax play I think you get a different experience every time. If it's dropped closer to your flesh it will burn more. If it's dropped from a height it has time to cool down just before it hits the skin. I think it also looks beautiful the way it drips over the skin and then solidifies. I even enjoy the, the burn marks on the skin afterwards. My name's Connor Ophelia. I'm a rope top and a sadist and I'm also the head gimp of Paraphilia magazine. Shibari is a practice that originated in Japan, more specifically from a samurai practice called Hojujitsu. When you are capturing a prisoner, you would tie them relative to their class or status. And so a series of patterns developed. It straddles this very lovely position between being Instagram friendly, but also quite kinky. And that has led to a huge amount of interest in it. With this kind of new, more global context, it's, it's changed and adapted for a contemporary society. Sadism comes from the Marquis de Sade. He wrote predominantly about torturing women. He did also practice torturing women against consent. If you look at it today in the context of kink, Sadism is a practice that involves consent, discussion, an understanding of what you're doing. It's a mutual activity. What we're interested in exploring are altered states of mind. The core thing of what sadism is to me is being in this space with somebody where it feels violent and it feels dangerous and untethered from reality. The thing that's interesting to me is you know, you don't want to venture in too far, but you want to peek your head into this kind of world where things feel a little bit unhinged. The, the little thread that keeps you attached to the ground is your duty towards that person, that you don't push any boundaries, that you, well, don't hurt them ultimately, whether that's emotional or physical, past what they want to experience themselves. I often say that my main kink is being my play partner's perfect fantasy. I can get into just about anything as long as my partner's into it, but on a more personal, general level, a huge masochist, of course. I love degradation, blood, I love CNC and abduction, kidnapping scenes, knives, fear play. Lately I've been fantasizing and making scenes around murder fucking and decapitating me and fucking my neck hole kind of stuff. But I'm a big horror nerd, so my kinks are all over the place. In most heavy masochism scenes that I do, I have these moments where I think, what the fuck am I doing? Why am I choosing to do this? This sucks. But I get that thought every single time when it starts to get very intense in the beginning before the endorphins have gotten to my head. I struggle a lot with presence in general in my life. I have very intense ADHD and I'm always thinking about everything all the time. I'm in the future and I'm in the past. And pain processing is something that really forces you to be now. You don't have the capacity to be thinking about anything other than dealing with the pain that is happening to your body. Your body won't allow you to be anywhere else but there. And I really gain a lot from that. It grounds me and it makes me connected to my body. It forces me to breathe and to feel everything. A lot of people really misunderstand pain. They think about it as an inherent bad thing to be avoided. 
But pain is really just a language that your body uses to communicate with you. If somebody was screaming at you to pay attention to something and you were ignoring them, they would just scream louder at you. When you tense up and you try and deny the pain, it just yells more. But when you tell your body, I hear you, I know what's happening to me and we are safe, your body can then relax and say, oh, okay, then let's just enjoy this ride. Then you just fly to the moon and you get super high and it's, I mean, that's what makes a masochist. The kind of play that I enjoy is more about physical touch. But at the same time, I like pain play, so I like being spanked and I like having my nipples tortured. When I'm not training people, then I like to go out. I'm a clubber by nature, I love to dance. The reason why there's such a controversy or divide, just black people in general being into kink and being able to show their kink and being able to show their sexuality is black culture across the diaspora is very, 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 very conservative. Knowing that you can express yourself in any way that you like, but as soon as you do it in this way, you're going to be deemed to be a deviant. I really like the London scene. Perhaps that has a lot to do with KV because it combines what I like about the American scene and the European scene. They do what they can to teach about consent, aftercare, safety, and to educate their community while also having a really fun, hot techno party. And that's amazing. I am McCall. I am a professional pervert and the founder of Club Forbidden. Club Forbidden is a provider of contemporary sex positive spaces. We started Club Forbidden in 2016. We felt at a time that modern kink should not materialize like the package description of a flesh colored dildo from an online retail giant. We found that modern kink was far more complex than what was served to us at the time. You know, you would visit a contemporary museum and then you would go to a swinger club where you uh, molested by an RGB blinky blinky light from Etsy and it just didn't resonate with us. Through the years we saw a larger diversity evolving within our community. We saw different types of play, preferences, genders arriving in our shores and it was beautiful. The layout of our events splits in several rooms and that is for good reason. We want people to brace themselves. We demand of people that there is consent, some form of communication going on prior to entering play spaces. So therefore, you will always have the chance to meet in several lounges or dance floors before even bringing up the idea to enter the play space with someone, and that is ultra important. Although we try to equip people with a basic requirement and knowledge before they enter our spaces, we still go on and try to fully digest the difference between yes and no. So for that case, we have another safety layer embedded, which is our crew are highly trained and they, to the best that we can, try to mitigate the risks and ensure that communication takes place before play happens. To get a space working and laid out right in the first instance never happens. One event goes sort of by your gut feeling and then just spend eight hours watching people and then reassess for the second or third event and fine tune until you killed every dead spot, until you enabled play in places that didn't happen beforehand. And when you get that right, it's magical because you then really step into a place that feels liberated. My name is Adrena Angela and I'm a dominatrix. My favourite form of sadism is actually psychological sadism. I do enjoy impact play, particularly things that involve blood. It gives me this body rush and anything that's quite extreme just fascinates me on a sexual level. But predominantly my thing that really, really gets me is psychological sadism. So playing with someone's mind, deliberately hurting or humiliating or causing them to feel extreme sort of emotions is what really excites me. Trampling is very simply the act of standing on them, usually either barefoot or in heels, on their torso or face or genitals. 
I'm not entirely sure whether it's more of a foot thing or potentially a submissive thing. It can potentially obviously have masochistic qualities to it because it, it can be very painful but then also it can be almost massage-like. Sounding is when you get a urethral rod and insert it down a man's urethra. It's not hugely common in terms of the main list of kinks. It's quite marmite, I think. It's true, a lot of people who are into BDSM use it as a way of processing trauma or creating a space that they have control over when they felt that they maybe didn't have control in their childhood or in other aspects of their lives. But more often than not, it's being used as a tool to heal from those things rather than an unhealthy coping mechanism or outcome of being abused. But to say that people exclusively get into BDSM because of trauma or a fucked up childhood would be very inaccurate. For some people, they get an early fascination with a kind of fetish or they just fucking like it. People's reasons for getting into BDSM is just as diverse as the BDSM scene itself. When I play as a submissive with a new partner, almost always I use my safe word before I actually need it because it shows me how my play partner will respond. And when you establish that trust, then you can go so much farther with your play. Many people think about BDSM as an inherently sexual thing, and that's one of the biggest misconceptions about it. There's obviously a great overlap between BDSM and sex, but I think the overlap isn't about the physicality, it's about intimacy. And intimacy actually is about access. And so you access different parts of your partner when you're, when you're having sex, but you can access other parts of their emotional spectrum through BDSM that aren't just solely erotic. If you take the tools that give you access to arousal and apply those ideas to fear and happiness and sadness and pain and all of these things, you realize that kink is just an avenue in which you can access different emotions. And so it feels to me at least short-sighted to only engage in the erotic areas or at least have your practice always include the erotic things because you are rarely given the opportunity to access the other parts of people's emotional spectrums. And in my opinion, they're just as vast and complicated and beautiful as eroticism and arousal. Without aftercare, you don't have BDSM. What I always say is if you want to rip somebody apart, you have to be prepared to put them back together again. On the flip side of that, if you want to be ripped apart, you have to recognize the vulnerability that your play partner is giving to you by ripping you apart. That's a very intense and emotionally taxing thing to do to a person. Aftercare allows you to gently ease yourself and your play partner or play partners back into reality, to let everybody involved know that what you just did together was consensual and was fun and was okay. It's the fundamental element that differentiates potential trauma from a caring, thoroughly empathetic, fulfilling scene. Sometimes I feel as though we're on the verge of everything becoming illegal again. Kingsters have always been pushed to darker corners, underground, wished into non-existence. But as we know with anything, drugs, alcohol, sex work, making something illegal does not make it go away. It makes it more dangerous. That's part of what makes kink so demonized. But in response to that, the community is so welcoming and so tightly knit. I think the future of kink, at least maybe in a place like London, will be heavily affected, I assume, by our newly discovered courage and outgoingness around kink. So naturally, I think some people are going to be offended. There are also going to be some people that are not going to like this, and they don't want others to have those freedoms. So who knows, maybe it actually implodes from here.